Hi, my name is Peter Josikowski, and I'm the manager of the Museum of Lands Mapping and Surveying in Brisbane. I also have with me Kay Nadella, Senior Curator of the Museum, and Cecilia Tram, who was a past manager of the museum for about 10 years. The museum is a business unit of the Queensland Department of Resources. We're also part of the Queensland Museum Network. So all our accessioning and managing of artifacts is done under the Queensland Museum requirements. This presentation will overview the georeferencing project uh, that we've been undertaking, how it started, what we did, issues that we encountered, the benefits that we gained from it, and what we are doing now. So why do we need to, to georeference old maps? Firstly, let me explain what georeferencing is. It's about assigning geographical points that are common between the old and new maps. They are often road intersections, property corners, creek joins, and other natural features that tend not to change over time. Once a map has a geographic location, they can be searched geographically and able to be placed over modern maps or imagery using coordinates, which means the old maps can be searched, viewed, and overlaid in modern mapping systems. It's really about using these maps as an historic resource to their fullest potential, simply because we know their exact position in relation to modern maps and the fact that they can now be searched in mapping systems using a point, a location address or coordinates. For example, bring me up all the historic maps that cover a particular modern address. And there are ways that these georeference maps can be used that we haven't even thought of yet. It's essentially about making it easier for people to engage with history. I'll point out that the crowdsourced georeferencing work is coming to an end, and we are in the process of managing the large amounts of data and investigating ways to make these maps available to the public. I'll now hand over to Cecilia, who was instrumental in establishing the georeferencing program as a pilot project. Thanks, Peter. Uh, the Department of Resources uh, in its museum has a massive collection of maps spanning back some 160 years. These old paper maps receded into our archives and were digitised for storage. As the digitisation program was finally coming to an end, that opened the door to making the images more accessible. We tried a couple of pilot projects but decided the simplest option was to leverage the then new Queensland Government Open Data Portal, data.qld.gov.au. So it was very simple, using CSV files containing limited metadata and having a hyperlink in the file that links to an image directory. It now holds most all of the collection, but it is not a great customer experience. So we asked the question, what would a great customer experience look like? Imagine a map viewer showing modern imagery and data overlaid with historical maps as a seamless mosaic, perhaps with a time slider, and users able to search by year and zoom in to locations. The catch. Our limitations were virtually no budget, no access to GIS analysts, and no mandate. So if that's where we wanted to get to, what was our first step? Geolocating the corners of the maps would be easy, we had the coordinates on the maps and it would enable us to drape them over current imagery, but the datums are now different. So as you zoom in, the property scale, it wouldn't align, creating a confusing and unsatisfying experience. There'd be no wow factor, so we scrapped the idea. We'd need full georeferencing to more accurately integrate with other maps and modern imagery and data. So what technology would help us? Options included Map Warper open source software, Cloakan hosted georeferencer and Esri desktop tools. And what opportunities could we leverage? The obvious answer was crowdsourcing. Assistance from the hobbyist community we knew were out there based on all the customer feedback over the years and with initiatives such as the National Library of Australia's Trove success using uh, text searches. I assessed the options interviewing others using crowdsourcing around Australia. Libraries were getting great results, which was encouraging, but they aren't mapping experts. They felt the georeferenced image was the end of the process. We wanted to take it further. Could this work for us? I also sat down colleagues 
to geo-reference other maps using free online tools, and we discovered it was fun and even addictive. Using crowdsourcing would also have other benefits than saving time and resources for us. It would build on community networks and raise the profile of the museum and increase its social relevance. With the support of a core and passionate team of Kay Nardella, Anthony Rennox and Steve Trigg, a pilot project, Old Maps New Tricks, was supported in 2018 and provided with seed funding, with the caveat that the pilot had to complete by the end of the financial year. So we started from scratch in April, no pressure. Some of our early challenges, um, we are a mapping agency and the lead agency for spatial information in Queensland. We needed to make sure that this methodology was best practice and enabled us to get the file format we needed that was usable going forward, uh, that we could require a sufficient number of reference points. Um, and our online experience showed us um, that some websites were only requiring three reference points, for example. Another big question was, did people know what crowdsourcing was and would the community get behind it enough to finish the project in time? We came up with a list of organisations as a backup to target and we roped in our social media team to create some posts, posts to coincide with the launch. We need to be able to retrieve the images from the site with associated metadata. So would the georeferencing tool let us do this? And did we have the capacity to then store the files because they were so large? The final question and really the culmination of all our efforts was how would we showcase what was achieved in the short time frame? We managed to secure some time from our graduates and had them line up to Mosaic a single key series. We parked all the downstream questions like how will we release them to the public in order to focus on the here and now. We assessed several tools and finally settled on Clocan Technologies Georeferencer. It's a Swiss company that specialises in online crowdsourced georeferencing, map libraries and viewers, with some great examples around the world, in Europe and the US, including the David Rumsey Map Collection, which was my first introduction through their phone app, the British Library, National Archives of the Netherlands, National Library of Scotland, University of London and the State Library of New South Wales. So they had demonstrated successes. The major benefit was that Clocan provided an end-to-end -end solution that didn't require any on-site development at our end. Having said that, Anthony did need to configure the administration of the website to meet our needs and he provided that feedback to Clocan um, to improve their software. And remembering we're a mapping department and perhaps our requirements were a bit more sophisticated than the average library, for example, we wanted to use our own base map that included the official Queensland government data layers. Overall, the administrator role gave us a lot of control. There were annual hosting and maintenance fees uh, for use of their tool, and that was dependent on the size of uh, storage required, but very affordable. We were able to brand the site with our own logo and banner and make it appear as though it was hosted in our website which was really important to, uh, to us as a department. I'll hand over to Kay now, who's going to describe where we went next and the outcome. Thanks, Cecilia. With regard to what old maps were georeferenced, we had over 10,000 map scans currently accessible through the Queensland Government Open Data Portal to choose from. There were a number of factors that influenced the maps we chose. Historical value was important. Did the map series hold valuable historical information? Maps that showed names of people connected to the land, property names, locations of dams, bores and windmills. On this basis, we chose the earliest 1880s topographic maps and pastoral run map series, which capture the original cadaster amongst other series. We wanted to ensure we had coverage over all of Queensland. Capturing the different types of maps was also important. So we included cadastral, topographic and flood maps. We had to check whether any of our scanned map series had already been georeferenced to prevent any duplication of effort. For this reason, we did not georeference the cadastral 1 is to 100,000 series or the Queensland first four mile series. And that is, these were done by another government agency. The critical series georeferenced included the Queensland two mile county maps, the four mile Queensland second and third series, the two mile Queensland series, the flood maps and the 1 is to 25,000 topographic maps. 
Based on these priorities, we ended up georeferencing 2,305 maps from 27 series with a date range of 1871 to 2012. There are a number of steps involved in the process of georeferencing. Preparation involved choosing the map series and creating TIFF files of the map scans. The final stage was creating a spreadsheet with required information for Cloken, including ID, file name, title, publisher, publication date, physical width and height, and description. The second step was uploading the TIFF files to the Cloken georeferencer to create a collection. The spreadsheet was then used to populate the collection at the georeferencer site. This made the scans available for georeferencing in our branded Cloken site. To start georeferencing one of our maps, the community had to select the Fix the Location of a Map button. A random map was provided to them from one of the available collections. They next had to select a base map. We provided the Queensland topographic base map as it is the most accurate and detailed view of Queensland. They then compared the old map to the new base map and matched points, for example, road intersections, because they generally don't change, unlike creek and river channels sometimes. The default was to have the two images side to side, but the person could select the overlay option to see how well the images were being matched. When they were happy with their efforts, they could lodge the map for review by pressing the next button. The completed map was added to a queue for our review where we quality checked the results and added or manipulated additional points only if required. We were looking for the best fit and sometimes this was challenging as coastline and features can change over time and sometimes there are simply not enough features. Once the georeferenced efforts were approved, a georeferenced copy of the map was generated, downloaded and stored. Please note that once maps are successfully georeferenced, Anyone can go to the Cloken site, choose a map collection, select a map, and download their own copy of the georeferenced map. There were a number of challenges faced with the use of an external provider to assist with our georeferencing program. Communication was an issue. With Cloken Industries being based in Switzerland, there was a nine hour time difference, which impacted on response time. For our contacts in the company, English was a second language, and this led to misunderstandings in communication. We had to think very carefully about how we drafted our questions. We found the system documentation lacked depth and sometimes difficult to understand. As email was our main type of contact, responses to service requests often took much longer than we expected, which slowed down the release of the next map series. In terms of outcomes, the pilot project was very successful. In fact, it exceeded our expectations with respect to community uptake. We had to stop doing social media posts because we couldn't keep up with the demand for maps. We were able to georeference 48 maps in the short time frame, and the size of those files was 3.6 gigabytes. The accuracy of the georeferencing enabled our graduates to successfully create a mosaic without further manipulation, and this mosaic was published as proof of concept web service and able to be viewed in the Queensland Globe. Because of the success of the pilot, the department decided to continue the program as core business to include additional series with historical value. As core business, 2,305 maps were georeferenced over a two-year period, which equates to 96 maps a month being georeferenced by the community. The result is actually better than this because there were periods when we had no maps available due to issues with uploading new map series. This effort exceeded our expectation of 50 maps per month and meant that we finished our program sooner than we expected. We were intending after the initial promotion of the program to advertise it in a number of forums to encourage the take up, but the support of the community was such that we never felt the need to seek additional support. There are a number of learnings from, from our program. Using an external provider, by using an external provider, the timeframes are not fully in your control. We were assuming that we would have a, t a good community response, but that's not a given and would have a big impact potentially on the project delivery. While the majority of the work was done by the community, the preparation and review process did require our input. So when using crowdsourcing, be aware of this. Having our maps georeferenced and outsourcing the solution is a worthwhile outcome. It does not, however, complete the process. Additional steps are required with this information to add value and meet our original goals. Thanks, Kate, for explaining that process. As the crowdsourcing part of our uh, program comes to an end, we think the best way to make these maps available is through the Queensland Globe. 
Now, for those who haven't heard of the Queensland Globe, it is a digital spatial information resource with over a thousand layers of spatial information, including um, such base information as property boundaries, location address, vegetation layers, uh, imagery. Uh, but it's also got more obscure information such as car crash locations, boreholes, coal seam gas drill locations. Once these historic georeference maps are made available on the globe, the user will be able to search for a map using a geographic reference such as a point um, or a location address or even a bounding box. And then they can overlay and integrate the historic georeference maps onto a myriad of other spatial information layers. So we had a vision when we started this project and we are on that journey now. We imagine these maps overlaid as a seamless mosaic with a time slider and uh, users will be also be able to search by year and zoom into a location. These maps will allow the community to come up with their own creative uses and uh, we are making that happen. So to access the globe, just Google Queensland Globe and follow the links. For anyone in Brisbane or indeed visiting Brisbane, we encourage you to come up and visit the museum. Uh, to see how surveyors and cartographers have contributed to Queensland's development. We're at uh, 317 Edward Street, which is a very short walk from Central Station, and we're open Monday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. You can also follow us on social media through Land Queensland. We put up four or five quirky stories every month about our surveying and mapping history. You can also contact us by email and phone, and of course, um, our website. Uh, the website also has a link to the virtual museum where one can visit the museum from anywhere at any time, albeit virtually. It's been a pleasure doing this presentation and on behalf of all of us at the Museum of Lands Mapping and Surveying in Queensland, we thank you.